and loves us is really important if we are moving on in Him. Amen? The Bible tells us that man is doing speaking still. I know that many of the such volume that you can is not funny about the fact. Can you hear me? Not the way.
died in Christ. Amen? So I want us to establish and to understand how much God loves us and what it is. Don't get under pressure. Well, I'm not living up to what the law requires of how the love of God you can't. Don't try, but bask in the knowledge of how much he loves you. What will that do that makes you able to love him more? Do you hear what I'm saying? It's important that we realize that we cannot live bound by the law of Moses and the prophets. It, it's not going to work for us. And I know over the years that this verse of Matthew has been used so much for the church to say, this is how you're supposed to live. You're supposed to love God with everything within you. There is no man on earth that can do that. So Jesus said, I will show you how to love. And this is love, not what you do, but what I've done. Amen. Amen. Amen? Do you hear what I'm saying? You can relax in the knowledge that no matter what, God loves you. Jesus died for you. What does that, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel that you can love in return. Yes. Amen. It's easy then to love. But to be bound by the law will kill you. Because then people throw up their hands and say, I can't do it, so I've already broken the law, I've already sinned, so I might as well just go off and do my own thing. That's why people backslide. That's why people who have been locked into God, who have just been so on fire for God, they realise they can't live what the law requires and so they walk away. Amen? Amen. We, we really need to appreciate how much this is. I don't know about you, but I had so much teaching on these verses from Matthew about what I was supposed to do. I couldn't live up to it. What does that do? Makes me feel inadequate. Makes me feel um, unworthy. Makes me feel that God's not for me. That I can't get blessed. Why? Because I can't live up to what that scripture says. But that says very clearly the entire law and the commands of the prophets were based on those two commandments. Think about what that saying to us. Jesus came and he gave us life and he gave us life abundantly. Amen? Amen. Not that. In 1 John 4.10, remember, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Amen? Alright, in 2 Corinthians 5.21, New Living Translation says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Can I go back to this other, can, this other, can I go back to this one? Is that alright? Am I on? Oh, it's nice with lots of people out. Okay. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Hallelujah, I've been made right with God through Christ Jesus. Amen. So you see, if I've been made right with God because of what Jesus did on the cross, then those other scriptures cannot possibly apply to me because I can't live up to them. And I'm not right with God if I don't live up to what Matthew says in chapter 22. Amen. Was Matthew wrong? No. He was under the law. He was showing what the law required. The law is perfect, but man is not and cannot live up to the law. That is why Jesus came to give us redemption, to give us his grace. Amen? Amen. Be very careful when you're reading the Gospels that you don't get under pressure from the things of the law because Jesus replaced or he fulfilled the law when he went on the cross. He didn't require from us, like Dan said in communion, if God had made a covenant with us, we would have lost. He didn't make a covenant with us. He made it with Jesus, so we win because we are in Christ. Amen? So it's important to remember it's not about what we do, it's about what he's already done. 
It's about the finished work of the cross. It's about what he did on that cross for our breakthrough. Amen? The Amplified in 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake, for whose sake? For our sake, for me, for my sake, he made Christ virtually to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become endured with, viewed as being in, and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be, approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him. Why? By his goodness. Not because of what we can do, but because of what he did. Do you see the pattern of what God did for us, or what Jesus did on that cross? He took the pressure of us trying to be good enough. We can't be good enough to receive. He has already paid the price for our breakthrough. Amen? Romans 3, verse 22. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Think about that. We are made right with God. We have been made right with God by what Jesus did on the cross. He became, virtually became sin for us so that we could be made right with God. That's what it told us in 2 Corinthians. And this says we have been made right with God when we believe that. You see, all Christians, everybody that receives Jesus Christ has been made right with God. But so many don't believe that. So many don't realize that they've been made right with God. They're still trying to live under the law of the prophets and to love God with everything and feel like they've failed. Feel like they can't perform enough to be in God. But Jesus paid the price that we didn't have to perform. Because we don't have it within us to be able to do what the law requires. This says... We have been, or we are made right, past tense, already done. We have been made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus Christ, believe Him in every situation and circumstance, and you are made right in Christ. Do you hear me? Amen. It's important that we realize how much he paid for for us to be made right in Christ. That we can walk in the victory that Jesus Christ purchased on that cross. We can walk in the victory. We don't have to fight the victory. He's already given it to us. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. This is true for Adele, for Anthony, for um, for well, <laughs> I don't know my words, for Anne, for Jasmine, for Dallas, for uh, for Glennis, for all of us. This is true for all of us if we believe. If we believe that what Jesus paid for on the Christ on the cross, we can walk in the victory knowing that it's not about what I do, but about what he did. For he so loved me that he gave his very best for me. This is love. Not that I love God, but that he loves me. This is love. That God loves me no matter what. That God loves me for who I am, not for my performance. My performance will not get me there. I can try and do everything possible to make myself approved of God. It will not work. There is nothing I can do. Why? Because Jesus Christ paid the full price. He paid it all. I can't perform enough to be, um, to be good enough to love him with everything that's within me. In the Amplified it says, namely the righteousness of God which comes by believing with personal trust.
trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ, the, the Messiah. Confident reliance on Jesus. Believing with a personal trust. You see, to be a believer means I believe him in every situation on every day of my life. It's not uh, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Saviour and that's it for the rest of my life. Yes, it is it, but it's a daily walking in the belief, in a personal trust that he has my back, that he is for me no matter what's going on around me. Think about that. It's a personal trust. I trust in you, Lord, with all of my heart. It's everything within me. I know you've got my back. I know that you're with me, that no matter what my situation, you're going to turn it for my good. No matter how bad I might feel today, God, you're for me, and you paid the price for my breakthrough, for my victory today. Amen? Galatians 2, verse 21 in the Amplified. Therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift of some, as something of minor importance and defeat its very purpose. Think about that. Belittling what God has done. Just, oh, ho hum, well, that's all very well, but I haven't performed enough. Belittling what He has done is um, of making it of no importance. Think about what, um, you know, I've, I've been given some really lovely gifts and it's nice to be able to appreciate those that gave it to you. But if I was given a gift and, and said, oh, that's really nice and just um, thank you very much and then never say, for instance, my brooch and, and my necklace and things like that and then just never ever wore it, never appreciated it, what's that? It's belittling what the giver gave me, is that right? Mm -hmm. It's belittling their, their effort for me. Do you understand? And that's what we do when we don't appreciate what Jesus has done for us on the cross. When we, what does it say? Do not treat God's gracious gift. What is his gift? The finished work of the cross, the grace that he poured out. His love, not what I do, but what he's done. Amen? Amen. Amen. I do not treat God's gracious gift as something of minor importance and defeat its very purpose. I don't want to defeat what Jesus did for me because he paid the price. By his stripes I'm healed. Himself bore all my sicknesses, diseases, and by his stripes I'm healed. And then it tells me that he will provide my every need. I don't want to make those of, none of, of little importance and defeat the purpose of what those words say. Think about that. If I leave them as of little importance, I defeat their victory. I defeat the very words that he's given me. Amen? If I say, oh yes, well I know the Bible says that he provides my every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, but this is more real to me. What am I doing? I'm making it of no importance and I'm looking at it and defeating its very purpose of what those words. The Bible tells us that his word will not return to him void. So when I say, God, I don't understand what the situation is, but your word says that you provide my every need according to your riches and glory. So therefore, I believe, I choose to believe. I'm putting my trust in you and in your word for this breakthrough. And I know that it is, it is on its way. Amen? Same with their healing. God, I don't understand this pain in my body, there's this situation, there's something happening, but your word says that himself, Jesus, took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses on the cross and that by his stripes I am healed. God, I don't understand, but I believe that your word will not return void. Therefore, by your stripes I am healed. It's believing what he said to us. Amen? Therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift as something of minor importance and defeat its purpose. I do not set aside and invalidate and frustrate and nullify the grace for the unmerited favour of God. For if justification 
Righteousness, acquittal from guilt, comes through observing the ritual of the law, then Christ the Messiah died groundlessly and to no purpose and in vain. His death was then wholly superfluous. Think about what it's saying. The first two scriptures that we used in Matthew, if we try to perform it, to love God with everything instead of receiving the fact that He loves me with everything. He loves me so much that He gave the very best for my victory. Mm -hmm. Do you see what the scripture is telling us? That we don't want to see that Christ died needlessly, groundlessly, and to no purpose and in vain, that his death was wholly superfluous. When you see the scriptures, when you see something, you say, wow, that is really good. I, then we need to say, that's mine. I believe and I receive it. I'm going to see the fruit of that in my life. That belongs to me. Start to receive it as yours, not receive what your emotions tell you, what your feelings tell you. Because not every day, I can guarantee you don't all wake up every day on top of the world feeling like you can conquer the world. If you do, then please stand because we want to give you a big cheer. <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying? Some days it's not easy to get out of bed. Some days it's just, oh. If you've known me a long time, you know how much I can this sort of weather. <laughs> Cold and wet does nothing for me. I can get into a real pit if I allow myself. I look at the bog on my front lawn, and because that's where we usually have to park, and I think, this is ridiculous. We had a visitor yesterday, and I said to Rod before, before this person came, I said, look, go and put something out to stop them parking on the front lawn. And he looked at me and he said, surely they can see the big grooves in the lawn and they're not going to park on the, on the front lawn. And I just looked at him and I said, you're wrong, they will. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me and he said, how did you know? I said, because I know that person. And they just, how they got out, I don't know, but it was very squelchy. <laughs> We're sort of juggling at the moment with the, the smaller cars, it's not so bad. We've managed to line them up next to each other at least to all these places. I mean, she backs up the arm, I admire the way she backs it up <laughs> Because she never hits my car and puts it right up close to the place. And so we're managing on the driveway instead of in the mud. <laughs> Right standing with God. 
Messiah, the anointed one. Through him also we have our access, our entrance and introduction by faith into this grace, this state of God's favour. Through Jesus, through him, in which we firmly and safely stand. Let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing <laughs> and enjoying the glory of God. Amen? Amen. They're powerful verses. They're verses that we need to remember that we have been given right standing with God. For God so loved us that he gave his best. It says it's not about us loving God, it's about him loving us. And this is showing us that no matter what, because he loves us, we have right standing with him, no matter where we've been or what has been going on in our lives. Let's go on in Romans 5, down to verse 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Even when we were in our mess, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. We weren't good enough when Jesus died. We couldn't perform enough. You see, the scripture in Matthew is talking about love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul before Jesus went to the cross. It couldn't be done and God knew that and so he sent Jesus to die even though we were sinners, even though we were still in that mess trying to make our way good enough to be in God. Amen? While we were still sinners, And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Full stop. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? Amen. Then condemnation does not belong to you. If you're feeling condemned, then you're listening to the wrong word.
for our sins. There is absolutely nothing you can do to make yourself right with God. He's done it all for us. I want to read you something that I believe will really bless you. The sum total of the law is to love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, as we read in Matthew 22. But let me ask you this. Has anybody ever been able to love the Lord with all his heart, all his soul, and all his mind? The answer is obvious. Not a single person has been able to do that. And God knew all the while that under the law, no one could love him that perfectly. So do you know what he did? He sent his son Jesus. When he, uh, when he did that, he was effectively saying this to us. I know, this is what God thought about us. I know that you can't love me perfectly. So watch me now. I will love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, and all my strength. And he stretched his arms wide and died for us. Take time to get this into your heart today. The cross is not a demonstration of our perfect love and devotion to God. The cross is God's demonstration of His perfect love and His perfect grace or unmerited favour toward us. Let me give you the Bible demonstration definition of love to make this even clearer for you and this is love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins that's the emphasis of the new covenant of grace unmerited favor his love for us not our love for him and when we focus on his love for us we end up loving him and others effortlessly it's all standard